Hey guys, uh, welcome back to another collab video. Hope you guys are enjoying the movie reviews that have been put out on the channel lately. Hope you guys have been enjoying that stuff lately. Um, just did the Fatherhood review yesterday, as well as the uh, Luca review uh, last night. So hope you guys are enjoying those reviews. Two harmless little films, I must say. So hope you guys are enjoying those reviews. So now we're going to do a, a collab video. Uh, kind of a small collab video for today. Probably going to be a little short, uh, just because not a whole lot of news going on. Some interesting stuff going going on, but not a huge amount of news. So we're just kind of just going to, you know, just talk about some small stuff there and there. One big topic we'll get into for today, but more or less just, you know, just a lot of just small topics there and there. So um, I will be I will be right back, but once we get back, uh, we'll get into our topics and uh, any by, by the way if anybody wants to do uh, any other stuff on this channel like trailer reactions or anything of that sorts let me know that'd be the game for doing some of that stuff so just let me know if you guys are interested in that sort of thing and uh, I maybe I can explore other uh, segments and ideas for this channel so let me know your, some of your thoughts but anyways I'm gonna get some water and we'll come right back and we'll do some of our news topics for this week all right, let's get into it. So, <clears throat> so uh, first topic we're going to get into today is about Knives Out 2. Uh, we have a new bit of casting that came out for Knives Out 2, which is, of course, uh, Jessica Hendrick. Uh, she's mostly known for her role in Marvel's Iron Fist. Um, I only saw the pilot, to be honest, and then I just kind of just went, nah, eh, I'm okay. Um but uh, she is set to appear in some actually some big projects, uh, The Matrix 4 being one of them. And she's currently on work on The Great Man. So uh, the new Rooster Brothers film, the most expensive film to come out from Netflix, by the way, has over like $200 million budget to it. But, um, but yes, Knives Out 2 is uh, set to be um, uh, beginning filming very soon in Greece, if not sometime um, this week or next week. So... Um, but I'm not really familiar with Jessica Hendrick. Uh, she appears to be having a big start for her career. Um, but not, I don't know a lot about her, but hey, I mean, uh, good to know that she is a part of the cast. It's just, it'll be interesting to know how this movie eventually, how it pans out, because I am curious to know if they are going to go for the same route that they did for the, for the first film, or if they are going to change some elements around. I'm very curious, but, um... Uh, I don't know a lot about her. I just really, I just know mostly about the pilot. Um, and it's hard for me to get into long-term programming. I mean, I love Breaking Bad. It's my favorite TV show of all time. But um, I've only have been interested in limited series just because I have a, uh, you know, a set. Um, you know, I, I, I'm able to, uh, what is it? I'm able to consume and invest into that whole series because I, ha I have a start and I have an end date, you know, versus a long-term television show where it just can go on forever, you know. And I, I, I kind of, I, I kind of have a hard time getting myself invested into that type of programming nowadays. But limited series, I can get into no problem. Um, but yeah, uh, I that's kind of one of the reasons I didn't get into Iron Fist, and also just because I just thought the pilot just wasn't that strong. But, um, but hey, I mean, glad to see that she's getting some big gigs. Um, I just. Hope she does good in the in the film, but I'm just I'm not familiar with her to really give a a big opinion on. So, so there you go. Um, just move around. Oh yeah, by the way, uh, butter. If you guys are wondering from my shirt, um, and it's like like dried up into my shirt now. So, um, and that was from breakfast. Just letting you know. Um, <laughs> just in case you're like, what the hell is that? That's from butter. Uh, but yeah. Uh, don't know why I had to mention that. <laughs> Anyways. Um, so let's get into the next topic, uh, which is about Bullet Train. Uh, David Lynch's uh, next film, uh, I think, I think they might have wrapped filming recently, I'm not sure. Um, it has a release date, uh, for April 8th, 2022, and uh, it's going to be released against Sonic the Hedgehog 2 and The Northman, Robert Eggert's next film. Um, and obviously the big question is, what is going to move? Which movie is going to move? And... Um, if I were to bet anything, it's strange because all of them have unique qualities, uh, and unique things to bring for that weekend. Bullet Train, obviously being an action film and with a big ensemble. Sonic the Hedgehog 2, obviously being a sequel to a financially successful 
uh, film. Um, and, of course, The Northman, which is a horror film with an, an ensemble to bring to that. Um, I will say the one that I think will probably move is The Northman. Because The Northman um, it has to build up appeal where Bullet Train and Sonic the Hedgehog 2 already have appeal. And I think that the studios are probably more... Uh, are, are wanting to also make bet on sure bets. And I think that Bullet Train and Sonic the Hedgehog 2 have more say, have more stronger bets than The Northman, which is an original horror film piece where Bullet Train and Sonic 2 are playing around with fields that are a lot more appealable to audiences. Not saying a horror film is not appealable to audiences. Again, if you want to hook an audience or get an audience in the, in the theater, it's either a superhero film or a horror film. That One of those two things will get people to, um, to go into a... Uh, to go to go to a theater, and also it's one of the safer bets in terms of studio uh, for executives to bet on and to put put, put money towards. Um, but uh, Bullet Train and Sonic Two, I think, are probably going to be keeping that date and probably going head and head to each other. And I think the Northman will likely move um, because of, of the just because of the of, of the needing to build appeal versus Bullet Train and Sonic Two already having attention and appeal to them. I think that's probably what's going to happen, but we'll see. Or maybe they, none of these people, none of these things will move. Maybe none of them will move. Who knows? But, um, but yeah, I think it's a likely a likely situation that the Northman's probably going to move. All right, uh, let's get into our main topic for today, which is about Morbius. Um, there was a recent uh, 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 a recent miscommunication from Tyrese Gibson, uh, who was doing press for Fast and Furious Nine. Um, and, which, by the way, this weekend I'll be watching, so look out for my review. Um, uh, he had confirmed during an interview that Morbius is indeed in the Mar Marvel Cinematic Universe, and then Sony came out and denied those reports um, that Morbius was, in fact, in the MCU, and reaffirmed that it will be released on January 21st, 2022. Here is the thing. Now, um, when the Morbius trailer came out, I thought it was in the MCU. You know, I was like, yeah, this movie's in the MCU because Vulture's in the trailer. And I don't understand why everyone is having a hard time comprehending that that is Vulture. It is Vulture, guys. Why would they build the trailer up to that moment? It's because that they are unveiling that this movie resides in the MCU and they're going to be playing with Spider-Man characters that were in the MCU. Okay? Uh, and that are in the MCU. Okay? Because Morbius, here's, here's how you look at it. Think about it like as the Netflix... Marvel shows, remember like Daredevil, Iron Fist, Luke Cage, Defenders, all those shows, that whole area was in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. They just couldn't, they just, they just didn't reside in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. You know, they didn't interact with like Iron Man or, uh, or Captain America or uh, Black Widow, Hulk, you know, they didn't interact with any of those big characters, but they still are within that world. Um... And Morbius is the same idea. Morbius will be interacting with Spider-Man villains and obviously Tom Holland's Spider-Man down the line, but it, he will not interact with like a big character like Doctor Strange or a Loki or a Captain America. They're not gonna he's not gonna be interacting with any of those characters. But he is interacting with Tom Holland Spider-Man, and within that, he is within the MCU, and the movie is a part of the MCU. It's not a part of the official Marvel Studios timeline, if that's what if that's what Sony is kind of like kind of emphasizing. But in terms of continuity, in terms of universe, in terms of overall just world, Morbius does reside in the MCU. He does. So um, unless there's like this big, they're teasing Spider-Man 3 a lot, so maybe there's something within Spider-Man 3 that we don't know about that Morbius has a part in. I don't believe so. But, but yes, Morbius is in fact in the MCU because of the connection to Vulture. That is, that is, that is the key. Vulture is in the, in the trailer. And assumedly Vulture will probably make a cameo appearance or something. But just that cameo alone puts Morbius in the MCU. So I don't think Tyrese Gibson was lying. I think that he probably was not allowed to say that. And Sony was just kind of just playing misdirect. Um, I think they are playing misdirect just because it's in the trailer. I mean, it's in their own marketing. If they didn't want that out there, then they shouldn't have shown that element in the trailer. A, cer a certain type of mentality that I will get into later with another trailer that I feel like shouldn't have shown something in the trailer. But anyways. Um, but Morbius, if they didn't want to reveal that Morbius was set in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, they shouldn't have shown that element in the trailer. Because showing that element in the trailer just 
shows us that yes, this this movie is within the Marvel Cinematic Universe. It won't be involved in the Marvel Marvel Cinematic Universe like the Netflix shows. Like, like Morbius is its own thing. It's its own thing, like the Netflix TV, Netflix shows. They reside in their own little world, but the big world that they are in is the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And Morbius is, in fact, in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, guys, because of the connection to Vulture. I mean, it's it's pretty obvious. I mean, I don't know. I understand why they have to deny it because they don't want to. They. It'd be honestly, it'd be good marketing uh, value to just say that Morbius resides in the MCU. So I don't know why you would deny such reports. But maybe they're also trying to keep it like a surprise or something. I don't know. Maybe there is something with Spider-Man 3 that we don't know about. But it, it is set in the MCU, guys. It is. It is set in the MCU. It's not involved in the MCU, but it is set in the MCU. So it, it's just... Think of it as the Netflix shows, guys. The Defenders will never interact with the Avengers, but they are in the Avengers world. Same thing with Morbius. Morbius is not going to interact with the Avengers... But Morbius is in the Avengers world. So that's that's what it is. Morbius is in the MCU, guys. It is. It's just not as involved. So it's an outsider. But moving on from that, um, speaking of uh, universes, let's talk about uh, Scoob 2. Yes, you heard that correct. Scoob 2. Scoob 2 is happening. Um Strangely enough, because um, I thought Scoob was not financially successful, but apparently Scoob 2 is happening. Um, and we have a quote from Tony Shivar, Shivon, don't know, the director of the first Scoob, who said the following, a uh, quote, this comes from comic book movie news, uh, they apparently did an interview with him, because apparently he's involved in Space Jam 2, uh, which is coming out in a couple weeks, and uh, he's doing some interview and some press, and he said this about Scoob, uh, the sequel to Scoob. He said, uh, quote, uh, quote, actually, we are, we are kicking the tires on a follow-up to Scoob. It hasn't been announced yet, but it's something we're all excited about. The whole creative team that made the first movie is still around and back and working on something new. It was neat to create this Hanna-Barbera cinematic universe, and, ex and it's exciting to return to it. So, they are moving forward with a sequel to Scoob, or at least they're in development on a Scoob 2. And I can honestly give a shit. <laughs> Um, because the first Scoob movie was just uh, very dull for me, incredibly dull, to be honest with you. And I found the animation style to be very just bland um, and unappealing, kind of distracting in certain elements. And I found the voice cast also to be distracting, Mark Wahlberg in particular. But um, I do think, though, there is... Um, how should I say this? Um... I do think if you focus solely on the Scooby-Doo gang, because the other problem with Scoob was that it was trying to build this whole universe. If you focused on Scooby-Doo and the gang, you might have some appealing stuff there, but that's not going to be the case for Scoob 2. They literally just said, and the, and the director literally just said, it was need to create this Hanna-Barbera cinematic universe, so obviously a Scoob 2 would be about, you know, expanding upon that universe more versus centralizing your focus on the Scooby-Doo gang. So, um... Yeah, I could really give a shit about Scoob 2, but apparently it has an audience since they are doing a Scoob 2. Um, but I just, I could kind of give a shit about it. But maybe you guys might be, but I could really care less for it. Um, just because I don't like the fact that we have, everything has to build into a universe. Um, I want movies to be standalone movies, just let them do their thing. And then maybe towards the end, like an Iron Man situation, or I'm trying to think of another film that did a successful um cinematic universe building like godzilla kind of um just give little sprinkles but don't make that the dominant element of that film and scoob was and scoob's dominant element was world building and that should have been the case should have been about the gang should have been about the mystery but not 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 about building a universe and that's what sounds like scoob 2 is going to do i'm not really all game for it so i mean i will i'll check it out i'll not pay 30 dollars for it so that was the other issue. The movie, it was like $30 on for you to pay for it. Absurd. Um, so, no, I will not pay $30 to see Scoob 2. Um, rental price, sure. But, uh, again, it could work. It could If they centralize their focus, maybe it could be, it'll be appealing and it could work. But I don't think that's what they're going to do. I mean, they literally say it's probably going to be about expanding their universe. And I'm just not game for that because that was my issue with the first movie. So, and that's why I didn't like the first movie. Um, 
But anyways, uh, moving on to our last two topics for today. Uh, speaking of Mark Wahlberg, uh, let's talk about a trailer that came out recently called Joe Bill. Um, it was it was actually called Good Joe Bill because uh, it came out like two years ago at the uh, at the t at TIFF. Um, and it got mediocre reviews from what I heard. And I can kind of give that same rationale and that same that same word for the trailer. It, it looks okay. Um, the story tells about a father who uh, the father of a gay man who um, who begins to take a walk through the, through the country um, in support of his son's sexual preferences and um, in support of gay pride and all this stuff and um, and uh, I will say this. Um, uh, firstly, I do not like that they spoiled a huge element in the trailer. Um, that the which is uh, what I mentioned earlier about a certain trailer revealing something in their marketing that I feel like they shouldn't have done. This is one of those instances because I do not like that that they revealed something big in the trailer. If you've not seen the trailer for Joe Bill, I will not spoil what that element was, but it does. Um, it, it 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 should have been something saved for the movie. It, I get why they had to show it because it's probably an element that's uh, shown earlier in the movie, but it should not have been shown at all. I feel like that should have been saved. Um, but um, nevertheless, though, besides that, I I think it looks okay. I mean, it's it doesn't look it doesn't look bad. I mean, the performances look potent, promising, but I don't think it looks that great. Um, I just feel like it just kind of feels not amateur, but just kind of lackluster to be honest. And um, I'm game to see a good Mark Wahlberg movie um, because Infinite was in, was infinitely dull, um, and uh, his last couple of movies have just been just mediocre and very meh at best. And I'm giving that same rationale for the trailer. I just feel like it looks very mediocre. Hopefully, the movie will be a you know, hopefully it will be good, but we'll see. Um, the reviews have just been kind of just, eh. But, um, but hopefully it will be a surprise for me, but we'll see. Um, the trailer is just, it just looked kind of just meh for me. But I do not like that they reveal that element in the trailer. I feel like they should have not done that at all. Um, it's, it's also directed by uh, Renato uh, Marcus Green, who did Monsters and Men. And he's also directing the upcoming King Richard film. Starring Will Smith, so interesting. Uh, it's, it'll be an interesting director of this. He has a good, he has a uh, a promising year ahead of him. Let's just say that. So, comes out on July twenty third, twenty twenty one, in theaters. So we'll see how this does. It comes out, I believe, the same weekend as Snake Eyes. So we'll see how this does. So it'll be interesting. Um, it it looks it looks it looks okay. I mean, that's really all I can say about it. It looks okay. I like the story, but it just looks like it's paint, it's paint, it's going for a much more uh, generic approach, and I just wish there was more to it. So at least just based off the trailer. So speaking of something that I actually think looks interesting, it, 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 I'll, I'll let me say this: uh, we're gonna talk about the trailer for Pig now. This is the last bit topic for today, um, starring Nicolas Cage and Alex Wolf, um, and comes out July sixteenth, uh, twenty twenty one, in theaters. Funny thing about this movie, I actually could have seen this movie a year ago because it was actually shown at the 2020 uh, San Diego Film Festival. I go to that festival every year, and that movie was actually a part of the, uh, the slate. I never got around to seeing it, but um, I heard, I read the description on paper, and I, and I thought it was obviously, in essence, a drama. I didn't realize it was going for this type of tone um, and this type of presentation because when the trailer started out, I thought... Is this a John Wick type ripoff? Um, and on paper, if someone was to pitch you the movie, it's about a guy who loses his pig and then he kind of goes on this quest to get his pig back. Um, type, kind of like a revenge type story of, of sorts. So yes, it kind of very much sounds like John Wick. But when you actually watch the trailer, in essence, in the way it represents itself and um, there's like a horror vibe to it, um, I found it to be unique, and I found it to be an interesting, I uh, have an interesting idea to play with. And it's taking itself seriously, but it doesn't. Uh, uh, it takes it's taking itself seriously, but I also have to ask: Is the movie also humorous? Is it self-aware? Because there's lines in the trailer that honestly are just funny. Um, 
Like, there's, I think the end of the trailer, like, Nicolas Cage says, like, I want my pig back. Like, it just, and, it, and he says it in a very serious manner, but it translates as, as a humorous reaction for me. Um, like, I'm, I feel like I'm supposed to laugh. Um, so I, I don't know if it's supposed to have humor. I don't know if it is self-aware. Um, because the idea sounds funny. Um, but they're taking it seriously. So I'm just, I'm curious if it is meant to be funny. Um, because if it's not, then it's, eh, I don't, I don't know how to feel about taking this approach uber seriously. Um, but if there is humor in it, I, I think that that will help the movie a lot more balancing out its serious elements with its humor, humorous elements. Um, uh, but, uh, I like the visual landscape. I like the idea of it. And I like just overall just the tone of it. Like I said, this, there's some horror vibes in the trailer that I found to be interesting. I just am questioning whether or not the movie is meant to be humorous because some of the lines are just funny. They're just funny. And again, the idea of Pig is also in some way lends itself to being humorous. So, um, I am curious if the, if, if the movie is, um, going for those, if it is going for any of those humorous routes or if it, it is leaning towards, um, that self-aware card, but I guess we'll see. I think it should because again, some of the lines are funny. I don't know if they might be funny, but hopefully the movie is self-aware enough and not taking itself uber seriously because if it is lines like that, I don't, I'm not taking them that seriously. That's just me. And the premise itself, like I said, lends itself to being self-aware. So I think that some humor can bounce out this movie. So we'll see. Hopefully there's some humor. But that's it for this uh, video, guys. We talked about this, just some stuff, mainly the Morbius stuff, um, some Scoob 2, some trailers. So you guys let me know your thoughts and all this stuff. Kind of a short video for today. And um, that's pretty much it for today, guys. I mean, you guys let me know your thoughts on this. And I'll get into my Fast and Furious 9 review, uh, hopefully this weekend. And any big news drops, we'll talk about it. So, And let me know if you guys want me to do some any... Um, let me know guys if you want me to do anything uh, new for the channel like trailer reactions or any like throwback reviews Let me know your guys thoughts in the comment section below and that's pretty much it for this video guys That's it. So make sure you guys stay safe. I know we have no mask res mask restrictions now, but still be safe still wear a mask if you want to um, If you want to get vaccinated get vaccinated and just be safe be protected social distancing and That's pretty much it for this video guys. Hope you guys enjoyed it and until next time guys I'll catch you next time. I gotta figure out a good outro for this stuff. So, anyways, guys, I'll catch you next time. Bye.